Hey y'all, Moses here. In today's Valorant video, we're talking about the first set of patch notes we received for the closed beta, including a much requested raise nerf. So I wanted to make this video as I've done in the past, going over my new favorite game's first patch. So without further ado, let's jump into it. All right, so for this video, I'm typically just gonna read the patch notes and talk about my thoughts. If you'd prefer there be gameplay here instead, just leave a comment down below. I used to do these videos for PUBG and I just did the patch notes, but if you want a little bit more spice, a little bit more entertainment, let me know down below and we'll, we'll put some gameplay in there for you. But for now, let's just read these guys. And uh, this is interesting because it's the first patch we've seen in closed beta. So let's talk about it. Hey, look at us. Patch notes in a closed beta. Who would have thought this short and sweet patch addresses the giant rays in the room, cameras that somehow learned how to shoot and some map updates. Raze is lethal, no doubt, and we predict savvy players will perform better against her over time. Still, we made some light changes that should bring Raze's offensive pressure closer to the other agents. We're also buffing melee to give players in the early rounds a better way to deal with Sage's barrier orb, while still making it a calculated risk. Don't worry, Sage mains, your slow orb now slows those bunny hoppers too. And we're booting the phrase camera gun back to English spy films where it belongs. Here's what Valorant devs have for you in patch notes 0.47 plus. The number carries over from our alpha. Okay, gameplay and balance. Melee attacks now uh, inflict double the damage per hit to destructibles, including Sage's Barrier and Haven's Metal Double Doors. Why? There weren't enough options during low econ rounds, such as the first round and right after switching size, uh, sides rather, to combat Sage's Barrier Orb. Our intent is to add a high-risk, high-reward method for players to interact with her wall, while still being able to take it down, no matter their loadout. So this essentially means that um, in those situations where the barrier, uh, the barrier wall was just too annoying to pistol through, or or if you were on an eco round, you just couldn't get through it because you're using a sheriff or something like that. So the knives now doing double damage to the wall uh, will make it a little bit easier to get through that, um, and a little bit less frustrating to get stuck behind those things. Just a good change. Um, that's overall just a, a simple one. Now, this is kind of the meat and potatoes. I'm going to talk a little bit more about Rays in my upcoming agent tier list video. I'm glad this patch came out before I made that. Uh, but let's talk about Rays. They reduced her paint shells from two to one, and paint shells now have a kill reset, requiring players to get two kills to refresh the cooldown. Uh, tuned and adjusted audio for paint shells, blast pack, and showstopper so that they'll be easier to hear in hectic scenarios. And they've also fixed an edge case where the secondary cluster of paint shells would explode quicker than intended and they have now a minimum duration before exploding. Raze's goal is to be a highly threatening duelist that punishes enemies posted in predictable positions, but we felt like the cluster grenades and their number were creating overly oppressive scenarios. Also, players should be supplied proper gameplay information, and the audio cues on all of Raze's abilities didn't match their threat, so we changed the audio for each. For example, when the showstopper is equipped or fired from a distance, players should be able to clearly identify and interpret the threat. Uh, so a little bit about this. Uh, Raze is a, um, I guess, a bit of a controversial character in her kit. And that's mainly due to the amount of damage she puts out, which is kind of what they're saying here. I don't think that Raze was as strong as perceived, but she was definitely very frustrating to play against. Uh, especially if you got trapped in an area and, you know, three grenade or uh, two grenades would come in. And then, the you know, whatever else she would chuck at. It's mostly the grenades, but... Uh, what I've learned over time is that baiting her utility early in games would definitely leave her open to um, to being useless for her team later on. And considering the utility that other characters bring to the table uh, in comparison to Ray's, I think she was okay. Um, I didn't really have too much points of frustration once I learned how to deal with her. But as a new character, or sorry, as a new player coming to the game, I can definitely see why um, Ray's would be annoying to deal with. But in this particular case, I think the changes they've made here are nice. Um, and I think we'll just stop seeing Rays get insta-locked every single game, which will be nice uh, just for diversity in, in your games. Uh, moving on to Sage. Slow Orb now also uh, slows the airspeed of players in the zone, uh, so you can't bunny hop uh, uh, and speed your way through those things like uh, you could before, which is a good change. Uh, players can now walk through the Slow Orb without making noise. Another good change because it was super annoying to try and deal with a Slow Orb. You basically, you were standing still or you were telling your uh, enemies exactly where you were. Players were able to circumvent too much of Sage's slow orb by bunny hopping through the zone. We want the minimum a, a slow amount to be a bit more consistent with all movement in the zone, while still allowing for bunny hopping and walking to provide a slight benefit to traversing the zone. 
Also, we feel adding a stealthy yet slow way to move through the field brings more nuance to playing against the zone and a bit more uncertainty for Sage since she can't necessarily hear people who move through. Just a good change. Um, it, it, it's a bit of a double-edged sword, but I think Sage is still easily one of the best players and uh, one of the best characters in the game. Uh, they've fixed a bunch of map exploits on Bind, Haven, and Split, which is just learning. I mean, uh, the boosts and all this other stuff uh, that you could do, um, especially on uh, on Haven um, from the back of Spawn and a bunch of other different things was just super annoying. I think they've probably left some of them in place, but we'll have to find out and see what still works after this patch hits tomorrow, uh, the 22nd. Uh, quality of life, uh, they've reduced outbound network traffic from clients or for players running at high frames per second. Um, no impact to gameplay or responsiveness. They fixed a couple of uh, crashes and uh, the fact that you could equip a gun on Cypher spy cam. Something I didn't really want to talk about because it was an exploit. Uh, but it looked uh, it looked like they've, uh, they've, they've squashed some of the obvious stuff that we learned in the couple first weeks of, uh, of closed beta. Uh, so that's it. Uh, I wanted to keep this nice and short, give you the information. Uh, I'm going to be making a tier list of agents next, so look out for that video coming up very soon. So be sure to subscribe to this channel for more content like that in the future. Leave a like if you like the video, and again, comment if you want me to do these patch notes videos a little differently. Thanks for watching, guys, and until next time, I'll see you out there.